Hey guys, before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to come on and say that I am not a mini album expert, that I have watched a lot of YouTube videos, mostly coming from Rosa Kelly Scrapbooking, which designed, I think, the book, and then also from John Ford, who has his methodical approach to cutting and providing some of the measurements that I'm going to give you when making the binding but I wanted to refer you to those YouTube channels and if you have any questions just leave them down in the comment section below and also please go and visit Rosa Kelly scrapbooking and John Ford's YouTube page <music> want to put this spine cover on the back and so I cut it a little bit bigger so that it would overlap to the front and I will just glue that into place actually I'm not going to use glue I'm actually going to use tape for that because I don't want the glue to get into the areas where I have scored because that would make the book hard to close. I made that mistake on one book that I made before and it was hard to close the book. So I don't want glue on the edges but I can put glue down the center here. And then I'm also going to go ahead and add a piece onto the ends here. And then we're going to always varnish the tape to make sure that it's adhered to the surface. And I think I may have forgotten to bring my tool in here to lift up the pieces. But I will just see if I can use something else in here until I go take a break. And I have a trash container there. So I have a little piece hanging over on the ends. I just fold them back on themselves since it's double sided tape. No harm done there. And then in the center only, I'm going to go ahead and put some glue. I must have had the lid off of my glue for a minute, so I need to poke through with a pin. You can also put glue over the tape. It'll make it so that the tape won't stick as fast when you're trying to figure out where you want it. So this is going to be very near the top and then once it's on there I can go ahead and smooth that down and then also the ends here. And if you have glue oozing out I just rub it off. Actually I end up rubbing it onto my clothes. It's water soluble glue so there we go we have our spine 
onto the book and I hope you saw that because I picked that up and I don't think that that was in the video but basically you're gluing that onto the side and we could put on our front covers but I hate to put on my front and back covers while I'm actually working so we are just going to go to the next step which is our left cover pocket and so we are going to go ahead and fold on these score lines And this pocket is going to open out to the left here and so it's going to actually sit here but it's going to be a little bit shy of where our pieces connect so we don't want it into the slot the fold of our book and if it's too tight then we need to bring it back and also I just glued or just adhered this center every time you put something across something that has a seam line you need to go back in that so that you can loosen that seam up a whole lot better now because you don't want to rip especially when you have paper you don't want to rip paper so now i'm going to put this on the back i'm going to have to maybe i can use a pen to pull up my tape pieces until i go back and get my appropriate tool but we're going to pull up a corner, fold it back, pull up another corner, fold it back. And then we're going to pull up this corner down here and then this one here on the end. So what I like to do is just pull the tape out a little bit so that the whole thing is not going to be tacky. And then I put it where I want it. And you should have like an eighth of an inch space. And then I'm going to also not put it right on the edge. I'm going to leave about another eighth of an inch space. And make sure that I've got the same space throughout. And then go ahead and peel my tape back on the inside of the book. Rub that so that it adheres. And then I'm going to pull the side, I mean the bottom, and rub. And then the same thing at the top and rub. So now this end right here is open and that's where you can slide in some extra things that you may have in your book. And I'm going to go ahead and close my glue back up just so that I don't have to poke it with the pen the entire night. <laughs> now we've got the left main flap and we've got to fold on the line. So anytime you score, you're actually going to be folding that line. And this flap here, I want to again pull out. Let me get the pen. <laughs> I need to go get my tool. But I want to keep taping. So I want to pull out a little piece. And what we want to do now, this is the part that opens out. We want to place this right on the edge of this pocket because we want this page to actually open out this way. So this is one way of creating pages. And there is a way that you can create a hinge on your spine to create pages as well. But for this book, I don't need that style. But I will show you how to make it in a video. I'm not sure if it'll be this one or another one but we'll talk about that as well so there we go we have our left flap now on top of this left flap is where we're going to add our waterfall so we've got this left flap and we want to put a waterfall on top so we've got those four pieces 
that are for our waterfall pieces and then we also have the water band the waterfall band so we're going to go ahead and fold all of these pieces So we've got the first one here. We're going to pull back a piece of the tape paper and we are going to line this up with the top edge of this page here. So I'm just going to turn it around so that I can see better and I want to make sure it's nice and flat. Start down here because we know that's the end and then I place it here that part's going to stick I still got time to make some adjustments over here once I pull this tape it's going to be pressed down I lift my flap and I score to make sure that tape is adhered now that's one page of the waterfall and what I'm going to do now is put the next one right up to the end of the score line here. So right here, right here is a half inch space right here from where we scored this page. It's this piece right here, this flap. Do not stick your next waterfall page on that flap. You can come up to it, but you do not want to go over it because if you come over it, you may end up not being able to open your waterfall pages. So you don't want that. You start getting stuff up to the front and then these pages will not open. So make sure that you keep it down below here. It just be too much bulk as well. And when we're covering our papers uh, our designer papers we want to make sure that we do not um, and when we're covering with designer paper we want to make sure that we don't cover up any of our score lines so now we're going to go ahead and abut this up next And then once it's laid in position, then you can peel your tape. Lift that page up so we can make sure we got good adhesion. And we're going to continue that for all four of the waterfalls. So this is number three. Number three, and last one. Okay, you saw where my piece got caught so I have to go to the other end so that I can pull it off I just dropped my pen <laughs> get another pen <laughs> oh gosh I'm not used to working with holding on to something so small um, when I'm used to pulling stuff with longer pieces so I stick that side down and then go ahead and pull off the rest and again all right so now all we have to do is put on our left waterfall band 
So this whole thing, if you don't secure it some kind of way, it can flop around. It will not lay flat. You can see how it's puffy. So what you want to do is take your piece and put it in the middle. You can eyeball the middle. And then you want this on the edge of your paper in the center. Approximately, it doesn't, you don't have to measure. And then once it's there, you want to go ahead and rub it. And then it will come up here and it will hold your page down. Okay. So once you do that, you have different ways of holding your pages down. I do like to use magnets. So I'm back and I have my magnets and I'm sure you're not going to be able to see this magnet but they are very thin but they are also very powerful. Let me see if I can stick it to this pen. And it's just not going to um it's not going to zoom in for that but this magnet is very thin but they're very powerful and you want to put them down before you put on your designer paper so you decide where it is that you want it get some tape cut off a piece of tape and say okay I want my magnet to be right there and you just take your magnet down and now we want to put a piece of tape face up and then attach it with the magnet the other side we want to see which side is going to adhere so that's the underside here is where I need to put some tape and then I'm going to take that and put it back so that it snaps onto that magnet and I'm hoping you can see that. So I put one magnet piece down, got tape on the other piece, let it snap back together, hold my book into position of how I want it to work with the magnet and just close up on my piece. And I want to pull some of the tape off the magnet so that it comes back and it's adhered to the flap down here, okay? So that's my magnet. Now, normally I would do my right side as well and then put my designer paper on, but we're gonna just keep this all as the left side of this paper in the event that I separate this video if it gets too long. So I'm going to pull over my papers. I don't need my covers. We're gonna put those on later. And, um, we're going to go ahead and decorate these pages. So we're going to use our designer papers that we cut. And then we're also going to use the four and one half by six and one half inch card that I also cut. And I'm just going to take everything out and just sit it to the side. So as I need colors, I can pull any colors that I want. Okay, so the first thing that we can do is we can go ahead and cover this waterfall flap. So I will just get those pieces out of the stack. So these are my two waterfall pieces. And I'm just going to move my other pieces up and out the way for right now. And we're going to be working with these pieces I still have on the book. So anytime I'm gluing paper to paper or any anything like that and I want to make sure that it stays very well then I will use liquid glue for that so all of my designer papers and my photo mats get glued down and if you have glue oozing out then you can use like a paper towel to wipe up the excess glue I tend to just go ahead and use my hand and just wipe it on myself. So the paper, the liquid glue gives you just a small amount of time to rearrange it and then it's going to stick. 
so it dries really fast and I just want to make sure that I've got that done very well so I'm just doing it from the back side now I'm ready to put the paper onto here I'm going to take off the release paper on my double-sided tape and then I'm going to glue this onto the underside of the band and like I said I normally have cardstock that's like way thicker than this but this is very thin And this is our back page. And then again, want to rub that glue in. Heat activates it. Make sure it's stuck to the surface. And we're done. Now we've got our spine piece. We're going to put the spine piece on. This piece was the piece that was cut one inch by three inch. This piece here for the spine is cut 7 eighths of an inch by 8. And so you can tell how thin this paper is and I hope you can't see through it and see the brown. That's my concern. So we'll try it out with this piece since it's smaller. And if I need to add some black paper, then we will. Okay. So my book is 8 inches, so this has got to go very close to the edge. Okay. And again, if you have glue oozing out, just make sure you clean it up. Right there. And now we can go and rub it. Okay. And it dries pretty fast, so you don't have room to really mess around here. Alright, so we've got these two pieces. These are our two and a half by seven and seven eighths. And they're actually going to go inside of the pocket. And the edge will be right here along the sides once you tuck it in. So this is how it's going to look and you want to do that i'm going to hold off on this piece because i don't have the right side done yet but i am going to go ahead and insert this on the left so if i get glue anywhere i won't have it on my designer paper that's going on top here so i want to make sure that we get it up here toward the end that's going to hang out The piece that's in the pocket, you don't have to worry about it. It'll be a lot easier for you to slide in. And I'm just going to slide it so that it's in between the, um, you've got a flap underneath there with a seam from holding this page down. So I'm trying to make sure that I get the edges into that flap. And again, this glue dries very fast, and this paper is really, really thin, so I'm having difficulty sliding it in. If you use more of a cardstock paper base, you should be okay. Got glue on my hands, I just rub it on my clothes. And again, come back and rub that down. The paper that doesn't have glue on the inside, it's not critical because nothing's going to come back and catch it that way. So I, I do glue to about three-fourths of an inch down to the end, so it just gives me room to get into that pocket. All right, so this is what our left side is looking like right now. Right there. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to decorate our waterfall pages. And remember, we've got the flaps there that's going to hold it down. So, up on the top, we're going to be adding photos. And our photos are going to go, our sheets are going to go this way. 
or if you want you can have it with your landscapes or your portraits are all in the portrait orientation then you can put them this way but if they are landscape which most photos are i would put it this way and i'm going to make all of my books with the portraits this way and if they have pictures that are portrait then they can put them into the side slots or you can just turn the book to see the portrait the other way so that's what i'm going to do next what I am going to do is use glue. Well, I want to see what I want to put on my pages first. My waterfalls at the bottom. And I've got some flowers and some stripes. And I think I want to use those. And I'll probably use this on the final page as well. So let me see. If I put this one here, you kind of have them cascading. You can see one page from another so it's great to know how you're gonna place your items look at them before you glue them down to see if you like it so place that there and this one here so if you line up your pages and decide that you don't like it then now is the time to actually make those changes and I don't know I don't have a problem with this but you know i do have instead of the stripe i can try the solid green and then this one would go here and the same thing if i don't like the green then i can try to use this pattern here but we're just going to go ahead and go with those so we're on going to start actually on the back we're going to go backwards because we want to make sure that our papers are lining up okay so what we're going to do this is the last page of our waterfall we still have another page under here we'll come back to that later but for right now, I have this last page of the waterfall. I'm going to actually put this green on there. And so I want to pull card stock that will have some of the coloring that we have in our papers as well as pulling card, um, something that will contrast as well. So I kind of like this. We can use this with those. And then with the pink, maybe that's where we'll use the green. Okay. So I've got my photo mats here. So I'm going to glue. Remember not to glue these mats onto those seam lines. So I'm just going to put some glue down. And I'm going to leave a little margin around my pieces. And then we're going to glue that down. And then I have this photo mat here. I leave, I leave another space. About an eighth of an inch. And then we glue that down as well. And remember I talked about those little pieces that are extra. Let me slide this over so I can show you what I'm talking about. I will have to say it's very difficult working with just regular paper with this but right here is where you have that gusset from where you can't put anything over these folds neither one of these score lines can have anything on it but you can this is a half inch score line but you can take a piece of paper that's in three eighths inches just to add some decoration up there so that's what I'm actually going to do just to add some added color. 
because I love color. <laughs> And I just want to make sure that it's not over the fold score lines. And then I'm going to go ahead and get that. So now we can do this page as well, but we're just going to stay on the front for right now. So now when I fold this down, I have my next pieces that need to be placed, which is this one. And you can look at your flowers and roses and see if they look better in any one orientation over the other. So it's not that they're directional. Just sometimes when you cut a piece off, it just looks a little different. So now, I want to flatten this page and try to line this paper up with the alignment of the green paper underneath. And leave about an eighth of an inch so I use the pink one here I'm going to use green right here for my top photo mat about an eighth of an inch apart And then we're going to set that glue. And then we're also going to put a little strip up at the top. I have to make sure it's the right one because I do have some that are cut half inch. And it just adds that little extra decorative edge to your book. Close that down. We have our next piece, which is the green. So again, I'm just going to look and see if this looks better one way or the other. And I'm just going to glue it down. And it's only because it's a floral print. If it's any other type of print, I wouldn't worry about it. Again, try to line this up with my bottom edge as close as I can. About an eighth of an inch space up above. Use my boning tool to press. Wipe up any excess glue that's oozing out. And we're ready to put our paper on. We get orange on this page. And it doesn't matter if they match up or not. You can just pull any colors that are in your project. It just takes some of the decision making away if I match some of this up. Okay, and this is the last page that needs one of these smaller strips. And I just lay it on here to make sure that it's the right one. Because I just eyeball cut these. They're about 3 eighths of an inch. And put that in the middle. Got a little glue coming out, just want to wipe that up. And now we fold this down and we're on our top page. This piece goes here. Before we put it down, we want to remove the paper from our double sided tape. And we're going to glue this down.
so I've got the glue and now I'm just going to place this last one in position press and then come back with my tool now on your photo holders you can write the word photo if you feel like somebody is not going to know what it's for I don't have to do that because all of my people who are getting these are going to know what they are so we've got half of our left side already completed now we've got to flip up and do the back side of these pages the underside and then we also have this flap that's going to fold over we also have to add one onto that page as well so I'll go ahead and add this one onto this bottom page since it's already here and remember we needed nine of these we've already used four this one is number five And if you got any glue oozing out, like I said, I would I normally use my hand, but you can use a kitchen tile. And then we're going to put our photo holder up on the top. Now, since this is the last page on the bottom, we don't need to have that little decorative piece at the top it's actually going to cover the seam allowance of the I'm saying seam allowance like we're quilting but it's kind of overlap that spacer edge on this one so you don't need an extra piece here and now we're just going to work our way back I'm going to pull my book down so hopefully you can see it and now we're going to do the same thing up here we've got more paper here that we can choose from to make our pieces we should have four more one two three four so I'm just going to alternate these and put these on these pages let's see what the other page looks like so I like this one here so well let's see <laughs> decisions decisions I like this one here and then we'll put this one on this side but put the green closer instead of the orange maybe let's see yeah we can do that and then for our papers that are going to go in I think I'm going to use a neutral like tan just keep it neutral so I'm going to use all four of these as tan they could be separate colors they could be the same but I'm going to stick with tan for all four if you wanted these pages to be orientated differently instead of putting your glue gluing your pieces this way you would just glue them this way but that's not what I want not what I'm doing so I'm going to glue everything in the same orientation then I don't have to worry about the pictures how many pictures I've got in one orientation over another and then again we're going to use all tan pieces for these photos all right guys we had our camera SD card get filled so all I did was just rub this page down and we're going to continue on so that one we have the green here I guess I could put the I'll put the orange down it doesn't really matter <laughs> sometimes I, I do stuff like I do quilting thinking 
that I'm going to see it forever and it's going to drive me nuts. But I'm not going to have these books. They're gifts. So they won't drive me nuts. I will not see them. It'll only drive me nuts as I make them. <laughs> and then another photo mat. So what I like about this style of book is that you have lots of places to put 4 by 6 photos. And if you wanted to put, say, two photos on a page, because you can only put one photo on these pages, then you could make your book, say, 9 by 9 instead of 8 by 8 So that way you could get two on the page phone call come in Whew. it's a lot going on <laughs> and place this about an eighth of an inch apart pull this side up oops I gotta see where this at okay and I like to rub the glue too because if you don't, you will feel the, the line of glue underneath if you don't smooth it out. So yes, I do love to rub the glue. It also helps it sticks, but it also helps to not have it so that you feel bubbles in your paper underneath, especially on a thinner paper. And we're going to pop this one right here. And my last one for right now. One eighth of an inch from the bottom. About. No need to be perfect about this. Got the magnet on the other side I just ran into. <laughs> All right. So that's that. Magnetic page is there. So this is kind of what we have now. Magnet page flops down. And now all of these pages are covered with paper. We only have to now go over and do this left page flap so we've got to do both of these sides so at this time is where we're going to use those three and one quarter by six and one quarter designer papers and I really don't care which one I use we can let's see what's on this back page we're going to put our picture down over here and we're going to put our picture up over there. And then the flap band, is, you're going to cover most of that with the designer paper. So we're going to go ahead and glue those two down.
Okay, so now everything on this left side has been completed and we are done with this portion of the video. So we'll come back and we'll work on the right page in the next segment and I'll see you next time. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed. Thank you.